Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the three Vanguard index funds that you should avoid to grow your wealth and to achieve early financial freedom. And also I'm gonna add a fourth fund that you should absolutely avoid. So be sure to stick around till the very end. If you guys have seen my other videos, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Vanguard. And there's really two big reasons why. The first reason is that the interest of the company itself is aligned with the investors of their fund. And this is because Vanguard is owned by the funds that it manages and the funds are owned by the investors like you and me. The second reason why I love Vanguard is because they have the best selection of diversified low cost index funds and they're really the leader in the passive index investing space. Some of the best Vanguard funds for growing your wealth passively is VTSAX, VFIAX, and their ETF cousins VTI and VOO. And if you don't know anything about investing or you're just getting started, those four funds are gonna be your key to growing your wealth. And so I have several videos that I created based around these four funds and I link them down in the description below. So be sure to check those out if you're new to investing and you wanna know how to get started. And while you're down there, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you can grow your wealth and achieve early financial freedom. But this video is not about those good funds though. So just like a lot of other financial companies all over the world, not all Vanguard funds are worth investing in. So I'm gonna share, in my honest opinion, the four worst Vanguard index funds that you should avoid based on their performance, their investing strategy, and their expense ratios and why you should really focus on VTSAX or its uh, its smaller cousin VFIAX. Now Vanguard has 130 mutual funds, subset of which are index funds, which is the one that we're going to focus on, but they also have 59 ETFs currently. Now if you're not familiar with what a mutual fund is or an index fund is or an ETF is, be sure to check out this video right here, which I also link at the top and down in the description below. That will help you tell the difference and the similarities between all these three and even give you just a sense of which one might be better for you given your own financial circumstances. For this video, I'm gonna focus on those index funds that Vanguard has and compare those with VTSAX. And the thing is, there's a lot of index funds in there as well. And so what we're gonna do is narrow it down to those that are 100% invested in stock, just like VTSAX, those that are not close to new investors, just like VTSAX, and then those of all risk levels, whether it's a high risk fund or a low risk fund. And so by doing that, we were able to properly compare which ones are the really the worst Vanguard index funds compared to VTSAX. I'm also gonna be including funds that have all sorts of minimum requirements from $0 to $1,000 to all the way up to $50,000. So all those funds are fair game. Now you may be wondering why am I so focused on VTSAX? And really it's because it's the benchmark, it's the gold standard, especially for the financial independence, retire early community, and just investors in general who want to get some kind of benchmark to compare different investments. And I have a whole lot of videos on VTSAX as well as VFIAX, which is the smaller cousin. And that one follows the S&P 500. I have a whole bunch of videos down in the description below. So be sure to check those out to get more details and more information if there's any confusions or you have any questions. But for now, I'm gonna focus this video on comparing the worst funds with VTSAX and really show you the difference in performances between these index funds. So the first worst Vanguard index fund that I wanna point out is VTMGX, which is the Vanguard Developed Markets Index Fund, and this one is the Admiral Shares. There's also the Investor Shares, which are VDVIX. That one is closed to new investors. And in case you're not familiar with Vanguard's tier structure, there's the Admiral Shares, there's the Investor Shares, and Institutional Shares. They're just different ways that Vanguard has tiered share classes. And more recently, Vanguard has been shifting out of Investor Shares and moving people into Admiral Shares. And so just letting you know that you'll probably see VTMGX more frequently than VDVIX moving forward. One of the biggest differences between Admiral Shares and Investor Shares is the minimum required to invest. If you have a hard time finding $3,000 to invest in any of Vanguard's Admiral Share class of funds, then you can always go to the ETF version, which if there is an ETF version, you can always buy one share of those to get started. So going back to VTMGX, I'm gonna swing over to the screen and point out some details about this fund that I think should be of interest to us. So 
here I am on Vanguard's website and this is the overview page for VTMGX. First thing you'll notice is that the expense ratio is pretty low at 0.07%, which is pretty good for an index fund. Minimum required to invest is $3,000 as I mentioned before. But if we go down further, you'll see that this fund is about $118 billion in fund total net assets, which is about one seventh, one eighth of VTSAX. So it's, it's definitely smaller. The number of stocks is comparable where VTSAX has about 3,600 companies. This one has about 3,900 companies. And you'll see that based on the portfolio composition that most of the fund is invested heavily in Europe and the Pacific and somewhat in North America. And that makes sense since most of the developed markets, Europe, Japan, Canada, those are the, the basically the countries that this fund focuses on. I'm gonna really quick go to the prospectus and show you what this fund is tracking. You'll see it under principal investment strategies that this fund employs an indexing investment approach designed to track the performance of the FTSE developed all cap excluding US index, a market cap weight index that is made up of approximately 3,800 common stocks of large, mid, small cap companies located in Canada and the major markets of Europe and the Pacific region. Now we want to know how this fund compares to VTSAX. So we're gonna go to the performance tab. So we're gonna go to compare, add VTSAX. You'll notice that the VTMGX has definitely performed a lot worse than VTSAX. So if you had invested $10,000 into the fund 10 years ago compared to VTSAX, which would have grown to about $30,000, you will be at about, I'd say about $16,000. Now, as any good investor would recognize that past performance is no guarantee of future results. But in this case, I think there's some really good reasons why VTMGX is likely to continue underperforming VTSAX. And that has to do with the market that it's invested in. Developed markets like Europe, Japan, Canada, they're just not growing as much because there's not as much room to grow. With populations either stable or declining, it softens the demand for goods and services that businesses and companies provide. And so there's less growth for companies and businesses and just the economy in general. But the United States is a particularly interesting exception to that rule where we're still continuing to see a lot of growth. And even though we're developed, there's still a lot of economic expansion that's been happening over the last 10 years. Now, I think this fund will continue to underperform VTSAX simply because there's a lot of political turmoil, uncertainty in the European Union with Brexit and just everything that's happening in the political theater that's going to continue to dampen the economic growth in Europe. But you may be thinking well okay well what happens if I'm wrong and there's a lot of growth that happens in these developed markets eventually down the line well this is the key takeaway that I want you to get away from this comparison is the fact that 43% of all revenue from the S&P 500 companies are from overseas markets. And that means that VTSAX is in position to capture that growth whenever it does occur because VTSAX is invested in those 500 S&P companies and additional mid caps and small caps as well. By investing in VTSAX, you're already exposed to the overseas market. And I think if there's any growth that were to occur, you'll be able to capture that in VTSAX. And speaking of international market, the second worst Vanguard index fund that I want to bring up to you is VTIAX, which is Vanguard's total international stock market fund Admiral shares. There is also an investor share class of this, which is called V. GTSX, but that is also closed. Now again, I'm gonna jump back to the screen to point out some details about this fund as well. So here back on the Vanguard page, we're looking at VTIAX, and you'll see here that the expense ratio is 0.11%. The minimum investment again is $3,000 required. Going further down here, you'll see that this fund is about $400 billion in total net assets, which is about half the size of VTSAX. And the number of stocks is 75, 7,400 companies that are in Europe, emerging markets, and the Pacific. Now we're going to look at the prospectus to see what index it's exactly tracking. Here under principal investment strategies, we see that this index fund is designed to track the performance of the FTSE global all cap excluding US index, a float adjusted market cap weight index designed to measure equity market performance of companies located in developed emerging markets excluding the United States. Now let's quickly look at the growth chart for this fund. Just like what we did with the last fund, we're going to compare with VT 
VTSAX. And you'll see down here with a $10,000 investment 10 years ago that VTIAX has been performing a lot worse than VTSAX. If you had invested $10,000 into VTIAX, right now you'd be at close to maybe about $15,000. Whereas with VTSAX, you would be at closer to north of $30,000. So you may be wondering, well, why is VTIAX underperforming? Aren't emerging markets supposed to grow faster than developed markets? Frankly, in the last 10 years or so, that has just not been the case. There's been a lot of volatility, perhaps a lot of instability, uncertainty. And so you see that the US market has just been doing really well over the last 10 years or so compared to the rest of the world. And that includes the developed markets as well as the emerging markets. And so the key takeaway here though, is that the US continues to be a safe haven for global investors. And by investing in VTSAX, you get good exposure to the United States and the growth that could potentially be experienced here. But you also get a lot of overseas exposure that you can get with VTIAX, but why not just get everything with VTSAX because that's gonna simplify your investment strategy. And frankly, it's just a really good, well-rounded fund for both developed markets and emerging markets overseas. All right, the third worst Vanguard index fund is VENAX, which is Vanguard's Energy Index Fund Admiral Shares. Let's jump to the screen real quick and let me just show you some details of this fund. All right, back on Vanguard's page, we're looking at the overview of VENAX and you'll see that this is a very sector-specific stock fund. The expense ratio is at 0.1%. 1%. This has an interestingly minimum investment of $100,000. And that's probably going to dissuade a lot of investors to put that much money into a single fund. But Vanguard does make it known that there is an ETF version of this, which you could buy at the price of one share. Now let's move down a little bit further and let me show you real quick. So this uh, index fund has 134 stocks. So it's invested in 134 companies, which is not a lot. I think it's a little bit too low for for most investors. The fund's total net assets is 3.5 billion, which is definitely a very small compared to VTSAX. And you can see down here that the 10 largest holdings are oil and gas companies, which are as expected. Now, looking at the prospectus, let's quickly take a look at what exactly this is tracking. Going down to the principal investment strategy. So this fund is tracking the MSCI US Investable Market Index, an index made up of stocks of large, mid-sized and small US companies within the energy sector as classified under the global industry classification standards. And then we wanna look at the performance of this one compared to VTSAX real quick. And there there we go. And so here we will see the growth chart of a $10,000 investment. And you see here that this energy index fund has not really grown much at all over the course of 10 years. I'd say it probably hasn't even beaten inflation for sure. And while I'm not an expert in the energy industry by any means, I suspect that this has something to do with the stagnation of oil prices, energy prices worldwide. Now, is this a really fair comparison comparing a diversified total stock market fund with a sector specific fund? And it, to be honest, it might not be, but I think it just reiterates my point that unless you have some expertise in any particular sector or you know something that Wall Street doesn't, you are probably better off investing in the total stock market index rather than trying to beat the market in specific sectors like energy because it's risky and you might be missing out on growth in other areas of the economy. All right, the fourth worst Vanguard index fund that you should avoid is called VMMSX and the name of this is called Vanguard's Emerging Markets Select Fund Stock Fund. That's a long name, but actually this is not an index fund. It's an actively managed fund, but I bring it up because I think this is a textbook example of a fund that you should always avoid because of the expense ratio. So let's jump into the screen real quick and let me show you the details of this one. All right, here we are back on Vanguard and the VMMSX overview webpage. And here you'll see that this expense ratio is a whopping 0.94%. That tells you that this is definitely not an index fund. Looking down at the fund advisors, you can now tell why the expense ratio is so high because you have quite a number of fund advisors here who need to get paid. If we move down further below, here you'll see that the fund is pretty small. It's less than a billion dollars and it's invested in 279 companies, mostly in the emerging markets, if you see to the left. And you'll see at the 10 largest holdings here are mostly, looks like they're mostly Chinese. There's like a Russian company, 
Korean company. So it's mostly in emerging markets. And let's quickly look at the prospectus and see what exactly they're doing in this fund. All right, here we go. The principal investment strategies. The fund invests in small, mid, and large cap companies and expects to diversify its assets among companies located in emerging markets around the world. So 80% of the fund's assets will be invested in common stocks located in emerging markets. Yada, 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 yada. All right. And as before, we're going to compare this fund with VTSAX. So you'll see here, looking at the 10-year growth chart of a $10,000 investment, this VMMSX fund has basically not made you any returns at all over the last 10 years. And that's not surprising given the expense ratio. There's not really much commentary to add here other than avoid costly actively managed mutual funds and stick with low-cost index funds to see your wealth grow. And just to sum everything up, I put together a chart here, uh, a hypothetical growth chart so that shows you all five funds mapped over the last 10 years. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button down below and share with a friend if you think it'll help them in any way. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to get more videos on how to grow your wealth and achieve early financial freedom. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys at the next video.